when I was back at school, a pretty heavy but rather funnily meant insult was did your mother drop you on your head when you were little? And this is obviously implying that you have acquired brain injury when you were a baby and thus you must be dumb. Yeah, I know it's not funny anymore if you explain it, but you see, I can't see you, so I just don't know if you got it or my translation from Greek into English does make no sense at all. Hey there, welcome to this week's video about traumatic brain injuries and their possible recoveries. I'm Margarita and my mother says she did not used to drop me when I was little. <laughs> no. Jokes aside, a traumatic brain injury is actually something that is not very rare or hard to do or to get. It happens when an external force damages the brain. This can be anything really. For example, if you get into a car accident, if you fall while riding a bike, or if you get hit accidentally during a sports class or purposefully depending on the sport. If you just get shaken a little too hard, especially kids are easily affected by that because they just don't have the mass and the muscles to keep their head safe. Or if you fall on some rocks and get a skull fracture. And since the brain is very important, but also very unique, it can be traumatized in so many different ways. The complication with traumatic brain injuries is that each one is unique and since the brain is basically controlling everything in our bodies it can pretty much affect every ability you have from your thoughts and hearing to your ability to walk talk or move certain other parts of your body you or rather your brain has approximately 60 billion neurons or nerve cells these can be injured in very different ways a brain injury can be focal to one specific part of the brain or diffuse if more parts are affected for example if you have a bruise or an uncontrollable internal bleeding at a specific part of the brain like I don't, the frontal lobe for example this would be a focal traumatic brain injury because only neurons of the frontal lobe are injured if on the other hand one or more of the injured neurons has an axon connecting the frontal lobe to the temporal lobes let's say then it is classified as a diffuse axonal injury neurons and their axons can be injured stretched twisted or squeezed and this leads to problems in the wiring a person with severe Severe trauma can, for example, be in a coma because uh, the changes in the brain lead to it not being able to stay alert. After waking up, they might experience changes to their movement, some of their senses like hearing or seeing. They might have problems with communication, thinking or learning. Some may also see changes in their behavior like being super easily irritable and angry all the time with no apparent reason. So protect your brains, people! You really need them to stay functional. <laughs> I just thought of zombies now. <laughs> oh my god. I can make a video where I break down the different parts of our brains and their functions by saying what would happen if a zombie ate each part individually and I would dress as a zombie and then make a brain cake and eat it myself. Hmm. I don't know if I'm talented enough to make a brain cake and then you won't be able to see the most of the brain parts. Hmm. That's complicated. <laughs> Okay, no, let's concentrate. Um, what was I talking about? Ah yes, traumatic brain injuries. Okay, so as we discussed, brain injuries are not cool as they can alter everything from your physical abilities to your personality. This sounds pretty dramatic, right? How do people even survive that? Is there the possibility to recover from a traumatic brain injury? Well, yes, there is. Unlike most other cells in the body, brain cells do not regenerate when they are destroyed. However, this does not mean that no recovery can occur. So brains are pretty amazing. As the rest of our bodies, they might need a little time, but they can recover from a lot. <laughs> Unlike most other cells in the body, our brain cells cannot actually regenerate when destroyed, and nor can they build new ones out of nothing but they have something much cooler brain plasticity the brain is pretty flexible and can rewire its neurons to function and they can repair broken communication systems by replacing parts of them with neurons that just happen to be nearby i will not go into detail about brain plasticity now of how and which cell types can actually
actually replace one another or how they will grow in a part of the brain that was injured to increase the connectivity there and ensure their functioning because this would be an entire documentary and half of it we still couldn't understand since it is really complicated and I don't really have the technology to show this comprehensible. Brains are really amazing. So they can do so much unexpected and even some not yet understood stuff. And of course, as in any other injury, it can be either mended easily with a little more rest or not so easily. If you have a scratch on your arm, for example, depending on how deep it is, you, it will need more or less tending to or more or less time to be fully mended. So what do people with severe traumatic brain injury do to get better? They usually spend a good amount of time in the hospital and in severe cases, often needing help with breathing or eating. After these basic capabilities are restored, there is a rehabilitation process to help the injury to get back to normal. You can imagine the rehabilitation from a traumatic brain injury being similar to a bunch of other types of rehabilitation. You may have to learn how to walk again, like if you had had a broken hip or something, you may have to learn how to ride again, like if your arm had been in a cast for months, or you may have to learn to talk and to understand others, to plan your days or to recognize and express your emotions or whatever really. So as you can see, if the trauma was severe, it can be a very long and tedious process. And since, as we discussed in the beginning, every traumatic brain injury is very unique, it is also not always the same process of rehabilitation. Of course, even with so many magical abilities of the neurons themselves and with so many rehabilitation occupations existing, some brain injuries are irreversible. Well, all of them are irreversible, but the effects might be reversible as well. You know, you know what I mean. So do protect your brains a little bit more than the rest of your bodies because the rest only works because of them. I don't mean to be disrespectful to other body parts here, of course they are all important, but you know, you can't just put a plaster on the brain and wait it out. Also, it is scientifically proven that if you like and share this video, subscribe to this channel and hit the bell, all of your brain injuries will mend themselves in a jiffy. <laughs> okay, maybe it's not scientifically proven, but do it anyways. <laughs>